My name is Peter Bruninger, and I'm here with Bruno Putzi. Bruno, how are you? I'm fine, how are you? Bruno, we're here with this Grimm system, and I understand you're deeply involved with the Grimm project. Uh, how did that start, and uh, what's it all about? Well, it's, it, uh, I started this project like any geek would start a project, which is, <laughs> which is that uh, I was just curious to play around with uh, digital filters for uh, speakers. And so I, uh, the first thing I did was, uh, was get any, any old loudspeaker from, from the basement and, uh, and design a digital crossover filter for it. And then I, uh, I listened to it, and it showed a lot of problems. And, uh, for, but I, I found that somehow there was a lot of stuff that I could never get right. And then the next step was, okay, well, what else do I need to do? And then, the, the, then it turned out that the first problem I had to solve was not that of a crossover filter or anything electrical. It was really how the thing behaved acoustically inside, inside a real room. And starting from first principles, I, 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 I sort of came on the, uh, on, on the idea of uh, reverting to um, a kind of a design that used to be quite common in the, say, the 50s and before then, which is a wide um, speaker uh, with, with, a, with a very shallow depth. Okay. And um, that kind of helps to, uh, to, to, sort of, to sort of shield the one half of the room from the, from the sound at least up to a, a reasonably low frequency and, uh, and then of course you start looking at secondary effects like diffraction and so on and then a friend of mine had a really elegant idea of, uh, of, of using the stand as part of the, uh, of, of the baffle. And um, so next thing I did was, was rebuild or build a new box and, mm -hmm. uh, and do, redo the filters and that was uh, a whole lot better and then well a lot of, uh, a lot of tinkering and a lot of, uh, of polishing and honing and so on and, uh, and uh, that's, uh, that's how, the, um, how the Alice One came about. And here we are and it is uh, you know, just stunningly a yeah, beautiful piece. I mean it's striking, it's contemporary in look. Uh, I think it'll go in most any decor. Uh, when you designed uh, the electronics uh, for it, did you think of, uh, ahead of it that they were, would go into the base of the speaker itself? Was that part of the initial plan in the very, very get-go? Well, in actual fact, um, it, uh, the, the, the main electronics is not in the base of the speaker, but in the leftmost stand where all the connectors go. I stand uh, corrected, over here. That's yeah, right. Yeah, right in there. That, that's right. So, so essentially, the speaker can be uh, can be used as a two-way system, in which case you do not have this woofer, and the um, main system will then be sort of extended down to 30 hertz or what. Mm -hmm. You can actually you can actually program that. Mm -hmm. um, and what the uh, what what the optional woofer does is just take over low frequency duty from the main system to give it to, to give it more headroom and more oomph. I like that, a uh, low frequency duty. I think that's a good way of putting it. Uh, the speaker comes in different finishes. I've seen, uh, in fact, in Munich, uh, there were, they were finished in white. That's correct. Do you have any other options in the future you're thinking about doing? Um, well, we're always thinking about that. Um, but at the moment, we find that most people uh, seem to go with the, with, with, with the white finish. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and, and so, in essence, we, we have at the moment three finishes, which is, which is a pure white box, which is made of Corian, mm -hmm. you know, the, the countertop the material. Mm -hmm. um, and, uh, and we have this brown bamboo. Uh, and also, we can offer a black version of the that is that seems to be more popular in studios than than in the home. Mm -hmm. Well, I think the proof is in the listening, and we've heard them several times and on several occasions, and uh, they they totally disappear in the room. And what I like about it is you don't have amplifiers in the middle, you don't have equipment racks over to the side, you don't have to be an audiophile geek to get true audiophile sound. That that is that is exactly uh, what what I uh, what, what 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 I. What I like about it myself, mm -hmm. um, in a way that, of course, once you design this the, the, the circuit with a digital crossover and, and with a DAC and a power amplifier for each channel, in the end, you also end up with a product that is radically different from a user perspective, mm -hmm. in, uh, in, in that you don't have to, to, to construct a system out of, out, out of uh, separate boxes, mm -hmm. which is kind of nice, because, uh, because you, can, you can come into this room and, uh, and, and listen to the speakers and, uh, and apart from the room, of course, the sound that you get in the home is exactly what you're getting here. 
On the flip side, of course, it does mean that you um, have to be in this game for the music and for the pleasure of listening to, to good sound, not for the tweaking. Okay, well, uh, you've, uh, you've heard here from uh, the designer's mouth, uh, Bruno Putzi, uh, who uh, part of the design team at Grimm, led the design team at Grimm, so that people can have music in their homes uh, without having cluttered amplifiers, wires all over the place. It's, a, it's really a, a world-class product from Grimm. Thank you, Bruno. Thank you for having me. Good, let's do some listening. Here we go. I live in a tree house. I can see the world from up here. I live in a tree house. I am safe from the world way up Thank you. 